as we continue to talk about electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, we need to dive into the discussion of the steric effects on these reactions. Up until now, when we have been looking at the concept of directing groups, we are focusing on electronic effects. When we were describing something as an ortho para director or a meta director, that was always based on electronics. When we say electronic effects, what we're referring to is the molecular stability based on electron arrangements, based on where a carbocation is located, based on electron donating groups or electron withdrawing groups, or all of those sorts of things fall into the category of what we would describe as electronic effects. And so if you were predicting the product of an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, one thing you might be asked to do is predict the major organic product based on electronic effects. And if that were the case, if that were the only consideration, then the directing groups that we are looking at would either direct toward a product being a mixture equally 50-50 of the ortho product and the para product, or alternatively, if we had a meta directing group, then the final product would be only the meta product. So if electronic effects are the only consideration, and electronic effects are what was considered in that chart of directing groups. Directing groups are based on electronic effects. So if electronic effects are the only factor that drives the outcome of the reaction, then there will be a 50-50 mixture of the ortho and the para product as a result of an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction where we have an ortho para directing group. But electronics only tell part of the story. They tell a major part of the story, but they don't tell the full story. The other part of the story that we need to consider is sterics. So if we consider steric effects are considered as a second consideration here, then what can happen is that the larger the directing group is, the bulkier the directing group, the stronger the preference for making the para product over the ortho product because the para product is going to place that electrophile in a less sterically hindered position than the ortho scenario. So if steric effects are considered as a second factor, then the trend we notice is that the bulkier the directing group D, the stronger the preference for making the para product. And so as a result of this combination of electronic and steric effects, when we are dealing with ortho para directors, after we look at the electronic effects that would equally favor ortho and para substituents, we can additionally look as a second consideration about sterics to determine whether we expect close to a 50-50 mixture of these two or whether we anticipate a preference for the para product. And that preference is going to become stronger and stronger the larger and larger this directing group becomes. So if you had a directing group here that was something like a methyl group, relatively compact, you could quite possibly create substantial amounts of both of these constitutional isomers. On the other hand, if you put a tert butyl group in here, then what you would likely notice is that your product would become nearly exclusively the para product. And so when you are tackling problems related to this course, you will see a couple of possible scenarios on problems. You will see problems that indicate to consider electronic effects only and if that's the case, then completely disregard sterics. Focus your efforts on determining what's going to be predicted based on electronic effects alone. Or you might alternatively see a question where it says, consider everything, consider electronic effects and steric effects and predict what the sole major organic product would be out of the reaction. And in actuality, if you are considering in the real world electronic and steric effects, generally the steric effects are going to be strong enough to result in some preference for the para product over the ortho product. Um, but the exact ratio of 
the para product to the ortho product is going to ultimately be determined by exactly how bulky the directing group is and what the exact nature of the reaction is that you are conducting here. So let's do an example problem to highlight this with some actual electrophilic aromatic substitution reagents. So in this example reaction, we are going to be asked to, based on electronic and steric effects, predict the single major organic product of the reaction. I encourage you to hit pause, try this on your own, see if you get to the right answer or not. So acetanilide, and you will need to remember the names of the aromatic molecules that we learned back in the last chapter. So acetanilide has a nitrogen directly connected to the ring and then carbonyl and methyl group like so. Keeping in mind that the acetanilide nitrogen atom here has a lone pair of electrons, we can conclude without even looking at the directing groups chart that this is going to be an ortho para director based on electronic effects. Now the question though doesn't say to base our answer just on electronic effects, it says based on electronic and steric effects. And it says it will yield a single major organic product. So that indicates to us that we don't want to draw both the ortho and the para products here. We want to decide based on the combination of electronic and steric effects, what the single major product is going to be. So electronics steered us down the road of knowing that the product has to be ortho or para. It will not be meta because electronic effects are the most important consideration. Second consideration in the hierarchy is steric effects. And based on steric effects, we can further narrow down between ortho and para being preferable, keeping in mind that we have a group already attached here that would be relatively bulky we would expect that the major organic product of this reaction is going to correspond to bringing in that electrophilic substituent at the para position. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw out my acetanilide. And then looking at the reagent mixture that we're reacting with of iron, which is our catalyst and chlorine, Cl2, we expect that the electrophile that is going to come in here is going to be a chlorine atom. We specifically place that chlorine atom in the para position because the para position, when we consider steric effects, is going to be preferable over the more crowded ortho position. So this is going to be our single major organic product of this reaction. Let's take a look at another. So let's take a look at this second example. Based on electronic and steric effects, we're gonna predict the single major product of this reaction. So I encourage you again to hit pause, try this on your own, and then hit play to see the answer. So we're gonna draw out one terbutyl, three nitrobenzene, drawing out my one terbutyl, T-butyl group right here. At position three, we draw in our nitro group, NO2, and then we are reacting in friedel crafts acylation because we have an acyl halide, that's our carbonyl group directly bonded to an alkyl group, and that carbonyl is also bonded to a halogen. And then the aluminum chloride acts as the catalyst to create a very electrophilic carbonyl carbon right there that I've highlighted in pink. So with no carbocation rearrangement in this particular reaction of acylation, there will always be a direct bond here between the carbonyl group and the aromatic ring. No rearrangement in this reaction. So based on the fact that there's no rearrangement, we can start to think about what the product would be here of this, or products, and we're looking for the single major product, the one that is most preferred over all of the others. So I'm drawing in the original skeleton that we had here, and now I'm thinking about where should we put the acyl group. The acyl group is going to be that carbonyl group and whatever R group it's bonded to, so I'm showing that acyl group in pink here. So we need to decide whether that acyl group is going to bond to the structure right here, here, or here. How did I narrow it down to those three spots? Those three possibilities here, here, and here. Well, when we look at the starting material, we have a terbutyl group, which is an alkyl group, and a nitro group. Of these two, the terbutyl group is the stronger activating group. It is further up in that chart of directing groups. It is going to activate the ring toward electrophilic aromatic substitution, whereas the nitro group would deactivate the ring. Activators always win over deactivators, and so therefore we base the outcome, electronic effect of this reaction, on the tert-butyl group, because that is the stronger of the directing groups. And since 
that stronger of the directing groups, our tert-butyl group, we recognize as an electron-donating ortho paradirector, that tells us that the product needs to have the electrophile that we're bringing in at the ortho and para positions relative to the starting alkyl group. So the starting alkyl group on the product side was here, and therefore different constitutional isomers that would correspond to ortho substitution would be placing it here or here. That would make two different constitutional isomers because in one case you would have the new group sandwiched between the tert-butyl group and the nitro group. On the other hand, if you put it over here, that's not going to be the case. And then the third possibility is that the group could come over to here. So we have to decide as a second consideration, since we are considering steric effects as well, which of these spots of the three is going to be the most favorable. By electronics, we would expect all three to be equally favorable, but we're considering sterics here too, and so we need to delineate that further. Keeping in mind that a tert-butyl group has a lot more atoms than a nitro group, it's going to be a lot bulkier, and so there's going to be a very strong steric hindrance effect going on here relative to the tert-butyl group, and that's going to make both of the positions that are ortho to that unfavorable and therefore favor this position over here, the so-called para position. So let's go ahead and draw out that para product. So I'm gonna delete my bond here and here. That was just scratch paper, not what we're actually gonna do in the end. And over here is where I'm gonna plug in my acyl group at this para position. So plugging in my acyl group like so gives us our major organic product. And we're keeping in mind here that the first consideration, no matter how bulky any group is on the ring, the first consideration is always electronic effects. And then use the extent to which you have narrowed down the possible product by electronic effects to then hone your understanding by distinguishing between whether ortho or para is more favorable by looking at steric effect. But electronic effects are always the number one consideration and then sterics come in as a secondary concern. So as one final example of this, let's do the example that we have up here where we have a cyano group, CN, with a triple bond between the carbon and nitrogen, and we also have an isopropyl group here. So and we're in this reaction reacting with a mixture of sulfuric acid and nitric acid. That would be a nitration reaction is what we'll be doing here. Nitration reactions are always going to result in the substitution of a hydrogen atom with an NO2 group. So nitration is going to yield an NO2 group on the aromatic ring, and we need to decide where that aromatic ring nitro group is going to preferentially go. So thinking about the directing groups that we have here as our first consideration being electronics, we have an alkyl group, which is weakly activating as an ortho para director because of electron donation by induction. We have the nitrile group, which is pretty moderately electron withdrawing, because of the fact that we have a pi bond on this carbon that is directly attached to the ring. That is going to make it electron withdrawing because if we think about a carbon nitrogen triple bond here, we could draw that out more extensively. By resonance, the electrons would be pulled away from the aromatic ring, making the group electron withdrawing. And so that's gonna make that nitrile group deactivating relative to our alkyl group, which is activating. The activating group always wins. And so therefore we're gonna base the electronic considerations for this reaction on our stronger activating group, which is an ortho para director. And so based on the ortho para director, electronic effect that's going on, the product of the reaction is going to correspond to placing the nitro group that we're bringing in at the ortho position or the para position. And so in the case of this example, the ortho position would be here, which I'm highlighting with my laser pointer, or equivalently over here, draw one or the other, don't draw both because they are the exact same product, they have the same IUPAC name. The para product on the other hand would correspond to putting the nitro group down here, and we can't do that because there's already a group at that position. We can't bump one group out to put another one in there. So therefore, the only option is for the group that's coming in to go at the ortho position. So in this case, since we always consider electronics to be the main factor that drives the reaction, we have no choice but the major organic product of this reaction would indeed correspond to the nitro group 
coming in at the ortho position. It is not going to be forced to the meta position to reduce the steric hindrance effect because sterics are a much weaker driving force of these reactions than the electronic effects that are going on. And so therefore the major organic product of this reaction would correspond to placing that nitro group here at the ortho position because we consider electronics first. And then once we have considered electronics, then if there's multiple possible products, then we consider steric effects as a second concern and consideration. Um, that said, this reaction, it's quite possible, would not give a particularly high yield of any product because of the fact that this isopropyl group is relatively bulky. And so it's going to create some problems for that nitro group coming in in general. But it's definitely not going to force the nitro group into a meta position because sterics are never as important as electronic effects. It just might result in there being a low yield overall for this reaction.